Hello friends, I am Himanshu Jain. I am one of the co-founders of the Wall Street School. Now we get a lot of emails and messages from the students asking us to build content for some of the most prominent questions asked in an investment banking interview. And having placed more than 4,000 students in the last decade or so, we have a fair idea about the sort of expectations which the companies have from the prospective candidates. And one of the most prominent asks which the companies have is your understanding of the merger model. So in this video, we are going to cover exactly that. We are going to cover what is a merger model and how to build a merger model from scratch in Excel step by step. So this is going to be a detailed and a very practical video. So please watch it till the end to get the practical understanding of the nuances of the merger model. Let's get started. Welcome back. In today's video, we have to do four things. Firstly, we will be learning basics, basics about accretion dilution. Then we'll be preparing a quick merger model. Then we'll be determining whether that merger is accretive or dilutive. And then I'll be telling you a shortcut. With the help of that shortcut, you can skip preparing the entire model and directly determine whether this deal is going to be accretive or dilutive, right? The agenda is really straightforward. Okay. Let's start with the very basic. So three questions to be answered over here. The first question, what is EPS earning per share? Then what is accretion and dilution of earning per share? And why this EPS is very important in case of merger model? Okay, why you are not using any other uh, valuation multiple? So let us understand this. What is earning per share? I think this is very easy to explain. Suppose a company is earning 1000 rupees as profit and there are 10 shares outstanding of this company. So I can say 100 rupees per share is the profit, right? So what's the formula for EPS? Earning per share is equals to net profit divided by number of shares outstanding. Okay, this is EPS. How much you have earned divided by number of shares outstanding. Now the question arises, what is accretion dilution of EPS? Let's understand this with the help of example. So in case of merger, let's say A company is acquiring B company and creating a B company. Pre-merger EPS of A, the acquirer is let's say five rupees and post-merger EPS of A and B combined will be let's say seven rupees. So you can see the EPS is increasing we have no relationship with B right now, right? EPS standalone EPS of A is increasing from five to seven. We can say the deal is accretive. That is there is increase in EPS. Similarly, example two, if pre-merger EPS of standalone A was five, A and B combined, their earning per share is let's say three rupees. We will say this is dilutive. The earning per share is diluting. Early, earlier it was five, now it is three. And very rare scenario, earning per share is not increasing, not decreasing. There is nothing happening because of merger. Pre-merger, it was five rupees. Post-merger also it is five rupees. So we say it is a neutral EPS deal. There is no accretion, no dilution happening. Okay. This is accretion and dilution of EPS. Now the third question, why in case of merger model, EPS is so important? We have already discussed this in our previous videos. Generally, EPS is not a very good valuation metrics, right? Like you cannot use EPS and unless you are calculating valuation of banks or NBFCs or investment companies, you will not use uh, EPS as numerator or denominator. But in case of merger model, this is one of the easiest calculatable metrics that can capture the entire impact of the deal, right? If in case you use EBIT or EBITDA, it will not capture the impact of debt that is used to finance the deal. Right. But you are using EPS or net profits. Net profits is capturing the impact of interest. That is the debt that is used to finance the deal. Right. Other than earning per share, we can calculate some other metrics, but that will take lots of amount of time and they are not straightforward. Like you can calculate free cash flow to equity per share. You can do that. But for that, you need to prepare your cash flow. You need to figure out the working capital, fixed assets, investments and all. Therefore, we generally tend to avoid it. And EPS is considered to be one of the easier metrics to calculate to judge whether this merger is going to be accretive or dilutive for the investors. Okay. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be preparing a full fledged model 
in which we'll be calculating EPS. Okay. Okay. This is the workbook on which we'll be working. So this workbook is divided into three sheets, assumptions, merger model, and quick and dirty rule. Let's start with this assumption sheet. But before moving towards this, let me tell you, I have attached this blank file in the description below. So if in case you want to work along with me, you can download that file and start working with me. So we have set of assumptions given over here. Sales of acquirer and target is given. Cost of goods sold and their gross profit margin is given. Then their operating expenses and then EBITDA is given. Then depreciation, EBIT, interest expenses, interest income. So uh, like this is assumed to be a debt free company acquirer as well as target. So no interest expense have been assumed over here and no other incomes have been assumed over here. So your profit before tax, less income taxes and then profit after tax is given. Shares outstanding is given diluted rate of tax, market price of target as well as acquirer. The market cap will be market price per share multiplied by the shares outstanding diluted. Then we have current rate of interest. That is if we are going to invest somewhere, let's say this is savings rate of interest and then rate of borrowing. If you are going to borrow from uh, the bank or financial institutions, we are going to get it at 8%. Both of these rates are pre-tax. Okay. Then we have sources of funds. So whenever acquirer is acquiring the target, whatever amount is to be transferred or values to be transferred from acquirer to the target, 20% of it will be done in the form of cash then 50% of it will be done in the form of debt. That is you'll take debt and then pay in the form of cash and then acquire the stock. That is there will be share exchange against the shares of target. The shareholders of target will be getting shares of acquirer. Okay. Then cost of funds is given for cash. That is if you hold this cash, you could have invested and you could have earned 5% on them. Then debt. That is if you have taken a loan, you would have to pay 8% interest and then acquirer stock that is yield on the stock we'll have to calculate. Okay. Then we have a merger model. So I've considered five cases over here. If you are paying the target 15% premium over its market price, 20% premium over its market price, 25% premium, 30% premium and 35% premium. Okay. Firstly, we'll be preparing this full fledged merger model and let's see at what levels the deal is accretive and dilutive. Okay. Let us start. We'll have to start it from here. Cost of fund post tax pre tax cash is available. That is if you're going to earn 5% of the amount, then you have to pay some taxes. So how much will be your post tax earning? It will be simply pre tax earnings multiplied by one minus rate of tax. This acquirers rate of tax bracket close enter. So post tax rate is 3.8%. Similarly, cost of debt pre-tax is 8%. Cost of debt post-tax will be 8% multiplied by 1 minus acquirer's tax rate, bracket close, enter. So 6% and then acquirer's stock, uh, the, the cost of stock. So see, whenever you are calculating any cost of fund, what you do is what you pay divided by how much you borrow. Like in this case, cost of debt will be nothing but interest that you are going to pay divided by the amount that you are going to borrow. Okay. This creates our cost of funds. So in this case, see what you are going to get. You are going to get earnings of the company. That is you are going to get 8,25,000 rupees. If you are the hundred percent owner of the company and what you are going to pay, you are going to acquire it at market price. So, the market cap of the company is this much. So your yield is coming around 8.3%. This is nothing but one upon uh, PE ratio. One upon PE ratio is equals to earnings divided by price earnings yield. Okay. So yield post tax because this earnings is post tax post tax earnings divided by market cap will give you post tax yield. Okay. So this is acquirers post tax yield. Now we'll be creating merger model. Let us start. Five cases assumed premium. See, whenever you are buying a public company, you can't buy it at its market price. But because if you are trying to buy it at market price, why the sellers of those stock, why the shareholders of the target company will sell it to you? They'll directly sell it in market. So you have to acquire them by paying some premium. So I've assumed five cases, 15%, 20%, 25%, 30% and 35%. 
in all the cases the acquirer share price is going to remain the same so i'll say equals to and link it with this market price of acquirer 200 and then i'll fix this okay copy paste this is going to be my acquirer's share price now my what will be the acquisition price of the target so you are saying i will be paying over and above 25 rupees this is the market price over and above the 25 rupees i will be paying 15 percent so what will be the market price so it will be this 25 rupees i fix it multiplied by 1 plus this 15 percent I close the brackets, enter. So it will be 28.75. That is 15% over and above your current market price. I'll copy this and I'll paste this. Okay. So these are the various acquisition price which are being offered to the targets. Okay. So what will be the acquisition value? So against one share, you are offering to pay 28 rupees 75 pesa. If I multiply this by number of shares outstanding, that is this 2 lakh shares outstanding of the target. I fix this and press enter. So you will be offering 57 lakh 57, uh, 57 lakh 50 thousand to acquire the target. I'll copy this and I'll paste it. Okay. So this is your acquisition value. That is basically the value or uh, at what rate you are buying the target. Okay. Then this is this much amount is to be paid. And we discuss this out of this. 20% will be paid in cash, 50% in the form of debt and 30% in the form of stock. So let's do this. So I'll say this is the amount that is to be paid. I freeze this row, that is I freeze 8th row. So 6th row, my bad. This multiplied by this 20% and I'll freeze C column, C column because I want to keep this constant and press enter. So my cash paid will be 57 lakh 50 thousand multiplied by 20 percent. I'll just copy paste it like this and like this. Okay. So this much amount is to, is to be paid in the form of cash. This much is to be paid in the form of debt and this much worth of shares are to be issued. So if you have to issue this issue this much worth of shares and value of one share is 200 rupees that you have to issue to acquire the target. So how many shares you will be issuing? This much share, this much value, 17 lakh, uh, lakh 25,000 divided by price per share, enter 8625. I'll copy this and I'll paste this. So these many shares will be issued by the acquirer to acquire the target company. Since the formatting is disturbed over here, so I'll just select this entire thing and press control shift and seven key seven key just above your y and u key so it will give it a borders okay these are to be issued in the form of uh, like in uh, when the acquirer is acquiring the targets okay now we know how many shares are to be issued now let's calculate if we are calculating whether the deal is accretive or dilutive we need eps of standalone acquirer company pre-merger right so pre-merger income of acquirer is 8,25,000 profit after tax. Basically, I'll fix this. Copy. Paste. Irrespective of whatever premium you offer, your income after tax will be 8,25,000. Right? Shares outstanding pre-merger is already given. 5 lakhs. I'll fix this also. Copy. Paste. Okay. So 8,25,000 you are earning. Shares outstanding is 5 lakh. So EPS will be 8,25,000 divided by 5 lakhs. That will be 1 rupees and 65 paisa. I'll copy this and I'll paste it. It's going to remain constant in all the cases. Right? If in case you feel it's a bit fast for you to absorb all this, I'll request you to pause and do it along with me. Wherever you want to pause, you have that convenience. Okay. So pre-merger EPS standalone of the acquirer is one rupee 65 cents, right? Irrespective of any premium the acquirer is offering to, uh, to the target. 
Now let's do post merger calculation, right? That is A and B combining, that is acquirer and target combining. Let's see what will be the profits. So sales, sales of both the companies will combine. So I'll say equals to sum of, equals to sum of. Acquirer sale, com. Target sale. I'll close the bracket and I'll press enter. I think I've applied in the wrong cell. I'll just copy paste this. Okay. This is going to be the total sales, right? In all the cases, 50 lakhs plus 25 lakhs. So what I'll do is I'll just fix this B column over here and C column over here so that I can drag it like this also. And I can drag it. Like if I want to get COGS now, I have to simply add 35 lakhs and 20 lakhs, that will be 55 lakhs. So instead of creating some formula again, I can simply copy this and paste it. I'll get 55 lakhs because my columns are freezed, right? B column and C column. So whenever I'm copying, moving from like second row to third row, the columns remain freezed. Okay. So my gross profit will be 75 lakhs minus 55 lakhs, 20 lakh rupees. I'll copy paste this. I'll just highlight this. Okay. This is going to be my gross profits. Then we have our selling general and admin. I can simply copy this formula and paste it. So selling general and admin, 2 lakh plus 1 lakh 50,000. That will be 3 lakh 50,000. We have 3 lakh 50,000 over here. So my EBITDA will be gross profits minus selling general and admin. Enter gross profits minus selling general and admin enter copy paste and I'll bold it. Okay. This is my EBITDA minus depreciation of the combined firm. So I'll again copy this formula and I'll paste it 2,30,000, 2 lakh of acquirer, 30,000 of target, 2,30,000. Okay. I'll calculate my EBIT. EBIT will be EBITDA minus depreciation. Enter, copy, paste. This is my EBIT. Okay. And this is where it get, uh, it get, uh, it. we have our EBIT of 14 lakh 20,000, 14 lakh 20,000, 11 lakh plus 3 lakh 20,000. And this is where it gets critical. Now you have to calculate interest on debt. See a combined firm will be having debt of this much amount, whatever was raised by the acquirer to pay to the uh, the shareholders of target acquire now have taken this debt and in future acquirer and target are going to combine and create one single entity and that entity will carry this much amount of debt so i'll say interest on debt will be whatever debt i have taken in case in case of 15 percent there's a different debt in case of 20 percent there is different debt and so on and so forth so whatever debt i have taken multiplied by pre-tax cost of debt pre-tax cost of debt that is 8% and I fix this and press enter. So 2,30,000 is going to be cost of debt. I'll copy this and I'll paste it. As my debt is increasing from 28 lakhs to 33, 34 lakhs, you can see interest expenses also increasing. This is one component that you have to pay special attention. The combined firm will be carrying this much amount of debt. Along with it, interest on foregone interest foregone on the cash that you have paid see you have paid this much amount of cash if you would have not paid you would have made some money on that cash by putting it into savings account five percent let's say our inter, uh, our rate of investment is five percent this is also pre-tax why pre-tax we are taking because see this ebit ebitda numbers all of them are pre-tax if i want to add something or subtract something from pre-tax numbers that number should also be pre-tax. So interest foregone will be whatever cash that I have, whatever cash that I have multiplied by. So interest foregone will be whatever cash I have utilized to acquire the target company. If that cash was not utilized to acquire the target company, I would have used this cash and generated some income out of it. So this multiplied by the cash used to finance the deal multiplied by 
द रेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स दैट इज फाइव परसेंट मेक श्योर यू यूज प्री टैक्स एंड फ्रीज इट एंटर कॉपी पेस्ट ओके दिस इज द इंटरेस्ट दैट यू हैव फॉर गॉन दैट इज दिस इज काइंड ऑफ एन अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट फॉर यू सो यर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स विल बी ई बी आई टी माइनस द इंटरेस्ट दैट यू वुड हैव पेड ऑन दिस डेट दैट यू हैव रेस्ड एंड द इंटरेस्ट फॉर गॉन दैट इज काइंड ऑफ योर अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट प्रेस एंटर कॉपी पेस्ट दिस इज योर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स इलेवन लैख थर्टी टू थाउजेंड टू टेन लैख एटी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड यू कैन सी योर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स इज रिड्यूसिंग वाई दिस इज रिड्यूसिंग इबिट वॉज सेम टिल हियर बट मोर अमाउंट दैट यू पे टू एक्वायर दिस कंपनी मोर कैश यूल हैव टू स्पेंड मोर डेट यूल हैव टू टेक देर फॉर मोर इंटरेस्ट एंड मोर इंटरेस्ट फॉर गॉन देर फॉर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स इज गोइंग लो ओके इज गेटिंग लेसर ओके नाउ इनकम टैक्स मेक श्योर यू से प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द रेट ऑफ टैक्स ऑफ एक्वायर एक्वायर रेट ऑफ टैक्स बिकॉज एक्वायर रेट ऑफ टैक्स द कंपनी विल फॉल विद इन द टैक्स ब्रैकेट ऑफ एक्वायर नाउ सो एक्वायर रेट ऑफ टैक्स एंड आई फ्रीज इट प्रेस एंटर कॉपी पेस्ट इन दिस केस इट विल नॉट मेक एनी डिफरेंस बिकॉज एक्वायर एज वेल एज टारगेट हैव सेम टैक्स rates but if in case these were different then it would have made the difference make sure you use the current tax rate okay so we have our net income now that will be profit before tax minus the income tax i'll copy this and paste it so 8,49,000 8,40,000 till 8,11,875 okay since the formatting is disturbed over here i'll select this entire thing and press control key shift key and 7 key together Okay, so the formatting is now restored. These are my net income of the combined firm post merger. This is how much the amount the company would have earned. Now, how many shares are outstanding of this combined, this merged company? A was already having five lakh shares, right? Plus, to acquire the target company, it issued this eight six two five shares. so the combined company shares are 5000 plus 8625 that is 508625 i'll copy this and i'll paste it okay these are the shares outstanding of the combined company now i can calculate earning per share of the combined company that will be total income of the combined company divided by the shares outstanding of the combined company So one point six seven. I'll copy this and I'll paste it. Not if you don't want to disturb the formatting, you can do Alt E S F. Alt E S F. That is paste special formulas. Paste this formula. Don't paste the format. Okay. This is my E P S of the combined company. My E P S of the standalone company, standalone A, the acquirer. was 1.65 i'll just link it over here okay so you tell me whether the deal is accretive or dilutive let me expand this to one more decimal okay so you can see here the deal is accretive here the deal is neutral over here and then it is becoming dilutive when we move towards beyond 20% premium it becomes dilutive okay so i'll just just say equals to if 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 eps of combined company is more than eps of standalone company then i'll say the deal is accretive if this is not the case then check if we are using nested if if eps of combined company is equals to eps of acquirer in that case it will be called as neutral and if this is not the case then it is going to be dilutive bracket close for first if bracket close for second if and press enter so first case it is accretive second case it is showing accretive but because of some decimal over here let me okay very slight difference after fourth uh, like third decimal okay 
so still it's accretive it's accretive okay i'll copy this and i'll press alt tsf so it is dilutive in case number three four and five that is from the point we started to pay beyond 20 percent premium it became dilutive okay let's calculate the accretion level so whatever is my eps of the combined company minus the eps of standalone company in this case it is accretive by two pesa in this case it is accretive by a very small amount 0 0.003 still accretive and then i'll just copy paste these are negative numbers that is without the merger happening you are earning more eps now you are earning less eps let's calculate accretion and dilution in percentages term so it will be simply whatever accretion is happening to you divided by whatever it was previously that is standalone basis pre-merger basis enter i'll copy this and i'll press alt tsf okay so you can see accretion happening over here of very small percentage and then it is dilutive in nature right i'll press ctrl shift and seven this is the entire p and l that we have to prepare to determine whether the deal is accretive or dilutive and this is a very uh, quick model right you can imagine if it was a full-fledged p and l the amount of adjustments we have to do to determine whether the deal is accretive or dilutive at different levels of premium there is a quick way around for this in which you don't have to prepare this entire profit and loss account that will be our quick and dirty rule let's understand this rule then we'll be applying it okay okay now let us understand how you can skip the entire process of modeling and then uh, telling whether the deal is acc accretive or dilutive how do you determine whether deal is accretive or dilutive without preparing the entire model so it involves three step the first thing that you have to do is to calculate weighted average cost of acquisition the formula is very similar to weighted average cost of capital weighted average cost of capital was cost of equity multiplied by weight of equity plus cost of debt pre-tax into one minus tax rate multiplied by weight of debt and if there is preference shares so cost of preference shares multiplied by weight of preference shares this is very similar to this see your financing deal using three sources the first one was cash the second one was debt and the third one was equity so what we are going to do is we are going to consider their after tax cost and multiply by their VAT. so cost of cash that is how much you would have earned post tax basis if you would have not used that cash for the purpose of acquisition but you would have invested that cash so cost of cash multiplied by weight of cash plus cost of debt after tax multiplied by weight of debt plus cost of equity multiplied by weight of equity so I've just simplified this version over here. So foregone interest multiplied by one minus tax rate multiplied by weight of cash. Interest on debt after tax multiplied by weight of debt plus profit after tax of acquirer divided by market cap of acquirer. This is nothing but earnings yield. Multiplied by weight of equity. We have to calculate this first. Okay, let's do this. So what I'll be doing is I'll be linking cost of cash, cost of debt and yield of acquirer that is PAT divided by market cap or basically a one upon PE ratio that is earnings yield. So cost of cash post tax is given to us this 3.8%. I'll freeze this, enter, copy and alt ESF 3.75% irrespective whatever premium you are offering cost of cash is going to remain the same cost of debt post tax is also available to us equals to this 6% I'll freeze it enter copy and alt ESF okay so we have cost of debt also available then yield of acquirer we also know this equals to this acquirer stock yield 0.83% we'll freeze this enter copy paste this is your cost of cash debt and acquirer and we already know the weights weights are going to be 20 percent 50 percent and 30 percent so we can calculate 
the weighted average cost of funds so it will be equals to bracket open rate of cash that is 3.75 multiplied by weight of cash 20% and I'll fix this plus I'll, I'll have to close a bracket over here then plus bracket open rate of debt after tax rate of debt multiplied by this 50% weight of debt I'll fix this bracket close plus bracket open rate of acquirers yield multiplied by the weight over here 30% and I fix this bracket close press enter it's coming at 4% I'll just copy this and all TSF so my weighted average cost of funds at these level of weights is coming as 4% constant okay now what I'll do is I'll calculate yield of target that is my next step okay the second step is to calculate yield of target at purchase price yield formula is earnings divided by generally we put equity or the market cap but here we'll be putting acquisition value the purchase price okay this will be the yield of target that is how much you are paying and against which how much you will be earning okay so pat of target divided by acquisition price let's calculate this so earnings in all four cases is going to remain the same it's going to be 2 lakh 40 thousand I'll fix this divided by I'll go here acquisition price is over here this acquisition value and I'll press enter I'll copy this and press alt ESF so you can see 4.174 3.8 so as the premium increases as we are paying more our yield is decreasing for the target right your denominator the acquisition price is increasing therefore yield of target is decreasing okay so whether it is accretive or dilutive we determine with the help of this rule if yield of target is more than cost of acquisition that we calculated in step number one the deal will be accretive otherwise it will be dilutive let's see this i'm saying if yield of target 4.17 percent is more than this weighted average cost of funds if this is true then the deal will be accretive otherwise it will be dilutive and so first case it is accretive right i'll just copy this i'll copy this and press alt esf so in first case it is accretive second case it is accretive third case fourth case and fifth case it is dilutive okay this is as per the shortcut and let's see what was the answer of entire merger model so uh, merger model i'll just write here and link it from here enter all tsf you can see the answers are same in both the cases the deals is like the shortcut is also giving the same answer a creative in case number one and two and dilutive in remaining cases and my full-fledged model is also giving me the same answer so this is quick and dirty rule you compare the cost of funds with the yield of target if the yield of target is more see basically what you are saying we are going to fund this deal at four percent and we are going to get 4.17 percent from it so it is definitely an accretive deal, right? We are going to fund it at 4% and we are going to get 4%. So it is almost neutral, right? Though because of some decimal, this is not exactly 4%. If I expand this, let me see. This is 3.9975 and this is 4%. 
therefore you see this is accretive but it's almost the same right we can call it as a neutral level like if you pay premium beyond 20 percent your deal is going to be dilutive otherwise it is going to be accretive right this is a very quick and dirty rule and this rule have some limitations this rule will help you to do a sanity check your, your on your entire model but this rule will not apply if the tax rate of acquirer as well as the tax rate of targets are very different in case of uh, synergies this rule will not apply in case of uh, merger and integration cost and write ups this rule will not apply but interviewers many times ask you these kind of, uh, these type of questions so that he can check you whether you understand these merger models or not okay so i'll just summarize what we did firstly we learned what is eps we learned when the deal is accretive and dilutive and why this accretion of eps or dilution of eps is really important in case of merger model because ebit multiples or ebit uh, ebitda sales etc do not capture the entire impact of a merger model when a debt is used to fund a particular deal okay though we can calculate free cash flow to equity per share but that involves a very uh, lengthy process therefore if you are doing that kind of work go and uh, prepare the entire merger model then we did an exercise in which we took some assumptions on the basis of it we prepare entire merger model and they gave us this answer then we calculated this answer based upon some quick and dirty rule okay and this rule will not work if in case there are lots of synergies the tax rates are different uh, there are some merger integration cost involved to off of big amount then in this case it will not work but irrespective of that this is a very good way to develop understanding of merger models with that being said we are stopping for the video thank you for your patience i hope to see you in the next video if in case you have any query suggestion or comments feel free to reach us at the wallstreetschool.com or in the comment section below thank you